Welcome back, YouTubers, to another Top 5 Countdown. Today we're going to be going over the Top 5 Most Affordable Military Surplus Firearms of 2016. These will be rifles that can actually get ammo for. Um, you know, the more obscure stuff that's cheaper. We might mention one or two, but these are going to be rifles that they're still selling surplus ammo for, and you can get it for relatively cheap. The biggest bang for your buck, basically, in 2016. Times have changed, but that doesn't mean you still can't get a, a really good military surplus firearm for not a lot of money. So for this one, we're going to kind of stick under $300, which is about the limit, I think, for a quote-unquote affordable firearm. Uh, obviously, like I said, times have changed. No more $60 rifles, no more $50 rifles. You're going to pay for it nowadays, but they, deals can still be had. I mean, $300 for a really nice rifle isn't really that bad. So without further ado, we're going to start at number five. Number five, we've got the Yugoslavian Model 48 rifle. This rifle was designed and implemented in the late 40s and used by Yugoslavia up until the 90s even in their Balkan Wars. They were using these in decent amounts. Um, these can be had for anywhere from $250 to $275 for a shooter grade rifle. Um, it's an 8mm, 8x57mm Mauser and they still sell surplus for it which is kind of nice and uh, it's a great rifle, great bolt action rifle. It's built on the intermediate FN model action and uh, it's really reliable. I mean I've hit targets at 800 meters with this thing with open sights as a shooter grade. Uh, this one costs I think around 240 or 250 dollars with shipping so deals can still be had on a nice Mauser rifle. Um, I think I made another video on this briefly comparing it to another rifle and um, as far as accuracy and reliability goes it's just as like a, just like a K98 so obviously under $300 is a lot better than five six seven hundred dollars for a World War II German K98 even a Russian capture nowadays are going for you know four hundred and fifty dollars so the Yugoslavian M48 is number five on our list and we'll move on to number four Number four on our list is a rifle that's similar to number five. It's the Yugoslavian Model 24-47. So these were FN Model 24 rifles that were made in Serbia in 1947. They upgraded them a little bit, kind of refurbished them, put the World War II Mauser style sight hood on the front, and uh, redid the stocks, changed out parts that needed to be changed. Again, this is going to be an intermediate action because it's the FN 24 action. Still fires the 8x57mm cartridge, so you can still get surplus for it. They're a little bit cheaper than the M48s most times. These can be had for anywhere between $200 and $250 with shipping online. Obviously some of your retailers are going to be charging more because they need to make a profit, but secondary market is a big thing and that's what I like to uh, buy a lot of my firearms off of and these deals can still be had. Features a straight bolt versus the M48's bent bolt. But other than that, it's a Mauser carbine. Very comparable to the K98 again. Or the next rifle on our list, coming in at number three. Got one that most of you wouldn't have thought of for number three. It's the Czechoslovakian VZ24 Mauser. Now, this particular one's a Romanian contract, so it was made in Czechoslovakia in 1938, 39, or 40 and sent to Romania for them to use on the Eastern Front. Now, these rifles, believe it or not, are a large ring, full-length Mauser action, fires the 8mm cartridge, and aesthetically it's different, but functionally it's the same as a K98. So, these rifles are beautiful. The actions are some of the smoothest I've ever used on a bolt-action Milserp rifle. Um, they're accurate, they're reliable, the straight bolt's actually a little bit better, in my opinion, because you don't have to grab for it like you do a bent bolt. Um, if you see my videos of me firing this, I'm able to work the bolt a lot faster on a VZ24 than I am a K98. A lot of my friends feel the same way. So, these 
are unbelievably good deals for under $300. I've seen them going nowadays from between $200 on the secondary market to $275 on the secondary market for a really super nice one with a bayonet and such. So for under $300, you can have one of the best Mauser rifles, in my opinion, that was ever created. This was designed in 1924 uh, by the Czechoslovakian government, and they used this rifle through World War II, and then it got sent to several other countries afterwards to, to be used. So you'll find a lot of these went to China. Um, they actually manufactured the same model, just in 7mm Mauser, for a lot of South American countries. So, if I wanted 7mm, it was more than likely a South American contract rifle. This was a European one, therefore it was the 8x57. Just an awesome rifle all around. Um, I really can't say enough good things about this, and the fact that they're still under $300 is just astounding to me, because this is just as good, if not better, than a K98, and K98s are abhorrently expensive. Now, the Germans did use these in World War II. There were entire divisions that were equipped with the VZ-24, because after they annexed Czechoslovakia, all these rifles were there, and they're interchangeable as far as, like, the ammunition, and some of the parts are interchangeable with the K-98. Bolts are interchangeable, and, and et cetera, et cetera. So there were entire German divisions equipped with this rifle. So it's an excellent piece of history. I like the Romanian contract ones, because I have a kind of a soft spot for World War II Romanian and um, this is one of the rifles I use for that impression. So this is one of the better deals but it only comes in at number three because there are still better deals to be had out there. So we're gonna move on to the number two spot. Coming in at number two and it's so long that it might not all fit in the frame but we'll get the main part of it in here is, again, the Mosin Nagant Model 9130. Yeah, I know these aren't 60 and 70 and 80 dollars anymore. I was on that awesome buying spree back before 2012 when these jumped asininely. But, considering what the rifle is and the availability of ammunition and parts and aftermarket stuff, and you name it, I'm still going to put this on the list of being one of the best deals of 2016. These are going for, for an average shooter grade one, they're going for about $250 to $275 shipped. Now, I, I know, like I said, <laughs> it's an $80 rifle, I agree, which is why I haven't paid that price for any of these. I have these all. I think the most I paid for this one, I think I paid $125 because it's a laminate stocked uh, 1940 Tula, and I just kind of like it. Probably won't shoot it, it's just going to sit in the safe as a collector piece and as an example of one of the variations. But for what they are, they're accurate enough, they're reliable enough, and you can customize them for all you that like to destroy pieces of history. But there's a lot of ways you can customize this without actually destroying the rifle or drilling and tapping. But anyways, the accuracy, the reliability, the parts availability, both aftermarket and surplus, and the ammunition availability are what gives this the number two spot. I'm sure unless this thing goes up to be $1,000 per, per gun and the Mausers stay low, this will remain in the top two positions uh, indefinitely because there were so many made and there's so many available. Hopefully, people on the next shipment of these will get smart and just not pay two, $300 for them and they'll sit and force the price down. But knowing people and how ignorant they are with the whole economic thing as far as supply and demand that's not going to happen so get used to paying over two hundred dollars for these some people secondary market might sell them for less because they remember paying eighty dollars and they haven't followed the surplus game in a few years so they might charge you 130 140 150 you could still get lucky but that's few and far between because the internet exists and everybody can do research now so in second place we've got the Mosin Nagant model 9130 One honorable mention before we move on to our number one spot. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, we're going to stick with weapons that can, ammo can easily be had for. Otherwise, this would have scored in probably the top two um, because I personally love it and I think it's a great underrated weapon. 
we've got the Japanese Arasaka Type 99 short rifle in 7.7 .7 by 58 millimeter Japanese. So the Japanese started using this shortly before World War II as they figured out the 6.5 by 50 rimmed cartridge or semi rimmed cartridge in the Type 38 rifle wasn't cutting it when they did their little thing in China. So they went with a beefier 7.7 .7 by 58, which is literally a 303 British cartridge without the rim on it. It's a, let's say a rimless 303 British. So that's a beefier round, very, very good knockdown power, good deer killer for sure. Obviously it killed several thousand American and British and Australian troops in the South Pacific, so it's good enough for me as far as killing deer. So anyways... These rifles can still be had. The shooter grades, you know, we're not talking about the ones with the chrysanthemum because those are going to be a little bit more because people think they're collectible for whatever reason. But for a shooter grade like this, these can still be had for between $200 and $250. And the only reason this didn't make the top two spots is because of the fact that ammo for it, if you want to buy it, is super expensive. Or you have to have a reloading press with 30-06 brass and a nice case trimmer to make the rounds out of it out of 30 six brass like I do, and then you shoot this thing for about five cents a round versus two dollars a round. I think this is one of the most excellent military surplus bolt action rifles ever implemented. It's got one of the strongest actions. It's accurate, it's lightweight, it doesn't really kick for what it shoots, and it's very simple to take down, and I wish the ammo was more available so more people could get out and shoot these old war horses and see just how good they are. The old old gun show myth of, uh, oh, it's Jap crap. Yeah, not gonna fly in my book. If you see my video on this, it's a very, very good rifle in the hands of an average person. And with somebody that's a really good shot, this is a pretty lethal little weapon. Like I said, it's very short. It's about the size of a K98 or VZ24, but still fires a full, uh, full power cartridge and doesn't recoil as much as a uh, Mauser carbine does. So, there's the honorable mention. I had to spend a little time on that because I have a soft spot for these in, in, in my collecting um, passion as well. So, honorable mention, Japanese Arasaka Type 99. Now, for our number one bargain on a military surplus rifle of 2016, I hope I'm not putting my foot in my mouth, and I hope I'm not going to encourage you to go out and buy these up and drive the price up but you know what who else is going to tell you this I'm going to let you look at it for a second first it's a nice long rifle what we've got here is the Turkish model 1938 or any of the variants the model 1903 anything in 8 millimeter these are going to be taking the top spot on this countdown because these rifles can be had for under $200 if you look and even on gun broker these go for under two hundred dollars in shooter grade a lot of people think that Turkey is a third world country it's not it it was an empire until the late 19 teens right after World War one and then they became a republic which is pretty well known to be an established nation now an established nation is not going to issue their soldiers crap so what a Turkish model 38 is is a rifle made in Turkey because their previous ones were made in Germany and you can tell that by the ASFA Ankara which is where they're made the arsenal and they've got the year on it and these are literally a German Gewehr 98 without the Langewitzier sights so they've got the tangent sights on it and the front sight post is the same it's a large ring model 98 action full length 8 millimeter and these are kind of like Mosin. Some you're going to get have been used and shot out and they won't shoot good. Those are going to be cheaper. The ones like this that look really pretty are going to be a little bit over 200 bucks, but they're still going to be well under 3 And the regular shooter grade ones that aren't going to look this nice but are still 100% functional with decent bores and decent accuracy are going to be $200 or a little bit less with shipping. That's why I don't understand why these haven't taken off more, but it's probably because of the, the myth again. You know, people take the gun show myths as you know gold and they think, oh it's Turkish it's crap it's garbage these are made to German standards so if you like Gewehr 98s and K98s that are German made you'll like this and these are so incredibly affordable that 
you know, it's just insane. These were $50 about 10 years ago. And now the price, they haven't kept up with inflation that much. So $200, you know, they increased a few hundred percent versus a few thousand like other guns have. And if you don't have one of these in your collection, I would highly recommend tracking one down and getting one. A lot of them come with bayonets and they're really cool. Each, every variant's okay. The model, I got, I have an 1893 that got updated in 1903 and then got updated in 1935 to eight millimeter. And that's even a cool, cool rifle. And those are going to be cheaper. So anything Turkish in eight millimeter long rifles, you might get some parts that need to be replaced because they were used and whatever. But for $200, a $10 part really doesn't matter. Um, it's all up to you. Again, this is one of my passions. I love Turkish Mausers. Mm, about 99% of them that I've fired are reliable, and my God, are they accurate. I mean, standing up, hitting 500 yards, you know, on a steel target, it's, it's pretty good for a $200 military surplus rifle. Bolts are interchangeable with the K98 and the Gewehr 98 because it's a large ring full length action. So parts are really easy to find for this, etc., that is my number one spot on this list because of all the reasons I just mentioned. If you agree, good for you. Go ahead and get one. If you don't agree, tell me what you think should be the top most affordable of 2016 military surplus weapon. Or rifle, rather, because we're not counting handguns for this. So, we'll see you next time. Like and subscribe if you uh, enjoyed watching this. Love these rifles, and they're really cool. So, we'll see you next time, YouTube. Thanks for watching.